Good morning and wow, welcome to the Scottish Off Grid. I, well, we are completely blown away about the amount of support and new subscribers and comments and love that we felt this last week. So thank you so much. It honestly does me, mean the world and that you're all here at the beginning of the journey, which is just so exciting. Obviously a massive thank you to the newbies for the shout out last week and pointing you all in our direction. Not only are they incredible friends and lovely people, it's really a testament to their hard work and their videos they've been putting out for years that they've got such a lovely community behind them. So hello and welcome. Um, we were going to start with a, the, we were going to do the barn this week, well start the barn this week, but as we've got so many new faces here, we thought it'd be really nice for you to get to know us a little bit more and um, have a tour around the farm. So here we go. our land, just under 20,000 metres squared. We are nestled amongst the hills about 45 minutes from Porto. We have a woodland, grassy flat terraces, a small river and an old stone barn. We are now in the process of making this forgotten place an off-grid homestead for our family to grow and thrive. We thought we would introduce ourselves a bit more so you get to know us a bit better I guess yes, and who we it. are. Um, it's very much out of our comfort zone. We're quite loud, bubbly people anyway, but talking to the camera, it feels weird. It does. Doesn't it? And sort of telling people about us and they're not, you can't see them. Yeah, sometimes I get well <laughs> into it and I'm a bit, um, was it Homes Under the Hammer? No, <laughs> Homes in the Sun. Escape you know to the Sun. Escape to the Sun. Yeah. That's what my friend said anyway. <laughs> um, we've had our hair done. Thanks, Nikki. Had our hair did. We had our hair did. Anyway, so we decided, I think we've had lots of questions of why we left England and decided to go traveling. The honest answer is last two years ago, um, my best friend passed away from uh, bowel cancer. She was only 37. She's got two children the same age as our big children. And to be brutally honest, it was horrific, wasn't it? Yeah. It was yeah. like such a shock. She was only poorly for 10, ten months. months. Um, anyway, yeah, it was horrible, but the... Well, it gave us a kick up the bun to do what we've been thinking about doing for a long time. Yeah. It's very easy to get stuck in the rut of normal life. And it was a huge wake up call that made us realize that life is so precious. Yeah. And actually, if we had the opportunity to grasp it and have some experience and make some memories with the children, it was the right thing to do. And we should have done it. And that's what we did. We did. So yeah, it was definitely Sarah that gave us the confidence. We've even got a picture at the front of our bus and she leads us wherever we go. So we love you, Sarah, if you yeah. can hear us wherever you are. Um, so that's the main reason why we left. It, you know, we wanted to make the most of the time we get given on planet Earth. So. We left and we had the most incredible year. It was amazing. It was great. Hanging out with our children, being with each other every day. We followed the sun. We followed we the didn't sun. Have, we didn't have a winter last year, which oh was my beautiful. Gosh, that was incredible. <laughs> it was quite a shock when we came here and had the rain, but yes. my dad did say, live in the country for a whole year before you buy. At least one winter. At least one winter is what he said. Yeah. But who listens to her dads, hey? Wouldn't be so much fun otherwise, <laughs> would it? Yeah, exactly. But we ended up in Portugal. We came last January. We absolutely fell in love with it here. We are lucky enough to get a visa. We've got a D7 visa, which gives us two years. We have to renew it. We get another three years and then we can apply for our residency. Our citizenship. Our citizenship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. Um, we must have looked at how many places? 50, 50 yeah. properties. I know. Maybe. The children were so fed up. Oh, right. It got to the point where they would even refuse to get out of the car. Well, also, we didn't know what we were looking for. So we looked at some houses, some pieces of land, yeah. some just woodland. Yeah. The children were... And we've amused. been, you know, we have been quite restricted by budget. We have saved for the last 10 years for a house and we've decided to 
spend all this year on traveling and now we do have our property but no house yet we're also super lucky because badger is a plumber by trade i don't know if you've noticed by his amazing plumbing work <laughs> and he's also super handy and i'm quite good uh laborer you are <laughs> i'm getting there. plumber's mate plumber's mate and um, so we are lucky that we are going to do we've got the skills to do all of the building ourselves hopefully yeah. bring in some neighbors you know who you are for uh lifting and putting roofs yes, on and stuff definitely but yeah, so we're going to build, we're going to set up a homestead, we yep. want to live a slower, more comfortable yep. life. Exactly, yeah, and we want to be off grid. Yeah. We want to make our own ways of doing things, like we've got our own water now that we did, we want to make our own electricity through solar and a turbine, Yeah. and we want to be self-sufficient, hopefully, to a certain percentage. And, yeah. Spend more our... time at home with the family. And with each other. Yeah. We've also, we've been together. Have I said that? No, we've no. been together since school, yeah. which is a very long time. We've spent more of our life together than yeah. we have apart, which is pretty crazy. I'd have got less for murder. Oh, <laughs> that's such a bad dad joke. Uh. Um, anyway, we love hanging out with each other and having a laugh and we're completely learning about everything we're doing. So it's great. It's exciting. Every day's a school day. Every day is a school day. And schooling, we've had lots of questions about schooling actually. Um, we did homeschool the children. They were in mainstream school in England. We took them out, which was actually very scary. I was nervous. But um, we took them out and they were amazing. We had a whole year of homeschooling. They thrived, didn't they? They really did thrive. They're incredible. They have now just started at the local primary school, um, which I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit hard for the first few weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. They, the school is a completely Portuguese school. They were having private lessons before they started, but they didn't know much Portuguese at all. But we are five weeks in to school. Uh, yeah. Yeah, five weeks into school. And they're amazing. Wilfred's just done a, part, a Portuguese test. He's aced like it. aced it. Betsy's making friends. She's loving it. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are with schooling. Um, for us, it was really important for them to go to the local school to meet friends, learn the language. Soon we'll do a video about putting children, expat children, into local Mainstream schools. schools, yeah. Um, I have actually asked them about school, so they're quite honest about the lunches. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all the best lunches. But yeah, we're super oh, I excited. I like them. They just, it's, they're just getting used to them, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're super excited to be here and we're meeting new people. We've got an amazing group of friends. And we're excited um, to share it with everyone. And we're it's super excited to share it. It's such a nice platform to be able to show people what we're doing and be involved and have them all along for the journey. Exactly. It's great, I love it. And if we can give one person a tiny bit of courage to... Or confidence. Or confidence to, you know, go and follow their dreams or yeah. try something different, then... You should do all, it. Do it. You should all have a Sarah <laughs> on your shoulder saying, yeah. just do it, Get just do it. it, go on. Um, so yeah, Definitely. here we are. This is the beginning of our land. Come see. This is one of my favourite terraces, I think. It's a little pocket of sunshine. From the very first thing in the morning, the sun rises up there and sets over there. It's south facing. I've got big dreams for this little terrace. I want a fire pit and plants and flowers and yeah, so it's really, has a lot of work to do, but it's one of my favorites. Where are we going now, Kayla? We are going to our beautiful stone house. Okay, it's not a house just yet, but it will be one day. beautiful buildings I think I've ever seen of course I would say that but the granite is really lovely like honeycomb color normally it can be quite gray but I think it has such a warm feel to it and one day in the future it will be our house let's show you into some of the rooms because then you can get a bit of an idea of how old it is and how much work we really have to do not to mention the beautiful view So our high security door. <laughs> Don't be 
Steve Hemming Burglinger. <laughs> so at the moment we are storing all of our belongings in here, as I said before on the other videos. Um, but you can really see the age of it. These old timbers, the cobwebs hanging out, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty old. And then you come up round here. What I love about this house is there's tiny little parts of history that have been left behind by previous owners. There's medicine bottles and wine bottles. Okay. There's onions hanging there's on the wall. There's onions hanging on the wall. There's ladders. Um, so I can't wait when it's a bit safer to go and explore and see what's been left behind. We've got four rooms in total in the house. As you can see at the moment, we're using it as our storage. And one of the things I noticed in here was if you get on top of all these timbers up here and look, there's a little attic room up here. And over in the corner is a super old traditional clay wine pot which we're excited to get to once we found a safe route to it and in the last room of the house we've actually got all of our windows and doors um, for the roundhouse which i found on marketplace and it was so i was so excited about them so this will be another bedroom one day i think yeah, it's definitely. Bad, isn't it? yeah. And here's all our windows. So these are all our windows and doors that have been taken out of somebody's old house, which we're going to reuse for the roundhouse. And doors. And the doors down there, bifold doors. And all this beautiful stone. You can see where everyone's been. Yeah, the As you come down from the side of the house, we're coming back round the front. You can see this building in front of us. I can't remember the name. Can you, it's Badger? A spigada. A spigada. It's where they used to dry, well, they still do actually, dry corn and other produce. Um, kind of like a, yeah, a drying barn. So, as you'll see in our previous videos, which are down here, we have a lot of earthworks done. So they brought all the soil from this end of the garden and leveled this end. So we're hoping to make a beautiful lawn here for the children in the summer. And then all the big works like the roundhouse are up this way. Kayla and I will be building it all from the okay. ground up. And we're currently parked just here. This will be the back garden of the roundhouse. And then that goes off into the forest. Grams. Can you tell me about Grams? Oh, he's living. I'm just going to let him go now. Yeah. Because he, he was wiggling. He was wiggling, wasn't he? Yeah. Can you tell everyone where you found Grams? In Australia. In Australia? Are you sure? In is it is it Trey or Monday? Um, uh, or, or do you remember? Crow, Crelo. <laughs> in Croatia. Croatia. He's growing up. Yeah. Now he lives with us. We're keeping after him. And his mum and dad is collecting milk for him. <laughs> really? Croatia oh. under this like. Where you shop like a and, kiosk. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. kiosks. Yeah, like, like where you get ice creams and cigarettes and stuff. Yeah, yeah like I, on wheels. And he he on wheels. I th yeah, <laughs> and and I think um we think either his mum couldn't look after him or abandoned him, so the lady pulled him out, and there was this. Um, everybody thought it was like this rat or this hamster. Yeah. And it was actually this tiny, tiny cat. Yeah. 
So then we, then the lady said, you have to take him or he'll die. And we were like, please. And I Mom, said, we can't take him because we live in a bus. Eyes hadn't opened. His ears were still down. His ears were still down. So, so we took him to our bus. Yeah. And we had, we found, we found a cardboard box and we got some sheep skin. Yeah. And put it in the box. And some and blanket. And we gave him a teddy. To yeah, and got this tiny little bottle that was with milk, and he was like, he like, it was so cute because when he got a little bit older, mm. um, when he opened his eyes, um, mummy was holding the bottle, but she she didn't re she just held it at the end, and he was like, he did he it used to hold on to the bottle, didn't he? Yeah, and now he's just a monster. <laughs> he's a very weird cat. He's like half human, half cat. What does he do that's so strange? Goes on the trampoline. Yeah, he eats crisps. <laughs> he does eat crisps. He only he... likes the tomato ones, though. Yeah, the herby tomato ones. And that's the story of our little crumbs. There's been a few moments which have been a bit touch and go, but now he's strong, healthy, and always up to mischief. Never fails to make us laugh. And he's completely obsessed with cars. But I guess that's what you get when you grow up in a bus. We have yet another terrace with the lavanderia, <laughs> the caravan. And then in the space behind all of this, which we've also had levelled out, is for our barn, which will be an open structure with a traditional roof. So we've got somewhere shaded to build the roundhouse. Now we're going into the woods to find the river. What I'm so excited about is the seasons changing. Because we're living so outside, I think it's really Hold like... Up. Spring number one. To the left. Hold up. Spring number one. This is our river. Well, our river bank this side and then our land goes up to the big stone in the background and then right up through that forest to the main wall which carries on all the way back. The river really is, was definitely one of the selling points for us. We've got so many exciting things we want to do, make dams and swimming pools and watching the children explore literally just makes my heart burn. Water is life. in the forest then? I think there may be like foxes or owls or even magical creatures like fairies. I, in a movie once I've heard of forest fairies. They live in trees. Yeah. There are rock fairies, there are pond fairies, there yeah. are all types of fairies and I think the forest fairies live in here. best thing about living here? Um, no neighbours. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure, there are no neighbours. No neighbours. Um, it's a nice view in nature, so green. What did you think when you first saw it here? I loved it. Okay. It was so nice. You don't think we're crazy? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> On this terrace, we plan to make our own little apple orchard. Potentially, maybe even pears. But we do have a really old apple tree, which you saw the children make a den in before, and she still produces beautiful, tasty apples. Somebody mentioned about tasting the grapes to see if they're sweet or sour. So. Well, I think they, may, they, they kind of said that they'd be like raisins. Okay, but. you try them. The 
tasted just like wood. <laughs> you don't they, like them? They just... It just tastes like wood. Oh, so okay. Maybe they're a bit too old. Hope for our wine yet. <laughs> And living basically completely in nature our children have really found a new love for well nature and that has is incredible new lease of life yeah a new lease of life we have the best of both worlds because we're 15 minutes from well 12 minutes from a local big town and then Porto is 45 minutes so we can have a bit of city life you know, the shops are super close, but also there's absolutely nobody around, which, yeah, is amazing. We've walked down here and we're going to follow the river down. Down here we come to a massive field which our lovely friend has planted some rye in. So we're really excited to see if it grows. It was a bit of an experiment, wasn't it? Rather than ploughing or anything, we just sowed the seed. Yeah, it's a no-dig. A no-dig method to see no if it will method. take. No-dig method. This is the mint... Ow! <laughs> Crumbs! This is the midfield here. We're not sure what we're going to do with it yet, but I think something epic, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> The nice thing about the woodland is it's terraced, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. So we have all those lovely stone walls going up through there. But there's so many thick brambles at the moment you can't even see through. So that is going to be a mammoth job. Tunnel, and I'm going to move her to here on this terrace. It's got amazing sun exposure, the water we can get from the caravan. Um, so yeah, I want to do that in the next week or so, so I can get the seeds seeds growing for our vegetable patch. And now we're coming back round to the start. If you can remember that wall up there is the wall that I cleared a few weeks ago of brambles. Got another big terrace here. Certainly we were going to put the roundhouse on this terrace but we watched the water flow, we watched the shadow, the shade and yeah we've decided to put it a bit higher up. I still love this terrace, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with it yet but um yeah it's beautiful. Why don't you two do the days of the week together? Okay, okay. so do I'll do it and then you do it. We'll do it together. Okay, Domingo. Domingo, Segunda, Segunda Feira, Terça Feira, Quarta Feira, Quinta Feira, Sexta Feira, Sábado. Sábado. And what day is our YouTube video out on in Portuguese? Domingo. Domingo. So tune in on 
Mingle. <laughs> Slash Sunday. Slash Sunday. Also, write down below which fruit is your favourite. Oh, that's a good idea. Could everyone let Betsy know what your favourite fruit is, please? And make sure to tell us in the comments it's below. Kiwi, if strawberry. You know words. Um, yeah, who knows any Portuguese kiwi? words? You do. Kiwi. <laughs> we do. But maybe you guys do. Kiwi. Apple. Kiwi's the same. This little terrace here is the one that was exposed the other week when the digger was here and the road was made. Um, it was completely covered in brambles. So now our plan for it is to fill it full of olive trees and fruit trees and yeah, anything that's gonna give us some fruit and everything. Thank you so much for joining us on our farm tour. Hopefully that'll give you more of an idea of where we are and what we're doing. Um, please, please hit that subscribe button. It means the world to us. It is completely free. It just means that you stay along with our journey. And if you want to be notified, hit the bell and that will give you a notification every time we release something. But hopefully we'll see you next week when the barn build starts. Thanks.